All right, guys. So uh, I've been thinking about this for a while. Last night I woke up at 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. I needed to write this about these guys. I hope it flies well with Harvey and Helen. It's a little unconventional. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, my expression of my love for them, but it's called Bitter Greens. And the um, uh, preface is uh, this party is not only a celebration of Helen and Harvey's 40th anniversary, it's also a celebration of friendships and the value they are in our lives. What is a life if not shared? Uh, beginning of the story, when I met, <coughs> first met Helen after knowing Harvey for some time, I was perplexed how a woman so kind and gentle could tolerate what appeared <laughs> to me to be a wild man of Borneo. In, in a very short time, I nicknamed her St. Helen, which appeared to flatter her and please her greatly. Harvey even adopted the phrase and did on occasion use it among friends. I explained to her my reason for the title. Any woman that could tolerate Harvey was certainly a saint. In fact, her ability to be with him clearly qualifies as a step towards canonization. In the years I've known Helen, I've never heard her curse, raise her voice, or see her angry. Remarkable and a model for those who aspire to sainthood. Helen is one of the most giving people I've ever met. Many times in the last four years, I've called their home distraught. She always asked if I wanted to come over and always added, we're here for you. Helen is loved by all who meet her. Yes. Harvey, on the other hand, Harvey. Harvey, on the other hand, we don't need to go much further. Most of this is Helen, and the rest is Harvey. Harvey needs a greater explanation. Harvey, on the other hand, is an acquired taste. <laughs> Years ago, I had an employee who was a recluse and very difficult, yet we shared many views and interests. We often engage in deep conversations, sometimes leading to debates. On one instance, I used the phrase, acquired taste. She, she was militant in her opinion that such a thing did not exist, telling me that acquired taste to her meant was synonymous with shoving something down one's throat. She averred that she knew all of her likes and dislikes from an early age. I found that absurd and extremely narrow. We argued, I cited bitter greens as an example of what is an acquired taste for most people. I argued that something can be truly disliked and in time come to be appreciated and even loved. That taste can evolve and change. Some of the best things in life come to be appreciated over time. She was not persuaded and I finally let it drop. But I hold steadfast in my belief and my life experience has given me ample evidence. Proof sits here beside me, Harvey Osgood. It is no secret that Harvey is not well liked by some. As he acknowledges. Even shunned. Even shunned. Particularly by individuals who are like those who purport to dislike bitter greens but have never tasted them. <laughs> but here is what I have learned. Along with Helen, Harvey is one of the greatest supporters and champions of friends and friends' interests and work that I have ever mm. met. Harvey is very generous in spirit. Anyone who would loan Avi Cologne a thousand dollars is either certifiably insane or the most generous person alive. <laughs> and Harvey is brilliant. Beyond his academic achievements in the sciences engineering, he has the most extraordinary it. facility to see, understand, interpret, and articulate the nuances of human psychology and interpersonal relationships that I have ever known. He invariably offers unique and provocative insights. I've often told him that he should become, have become a psychiatrist. When I was first a vegetarian, I virtually lived on salads. I became bored with a diet of ordinary greens, so I experimented with every ingredient I could find, even bitter greens like chicory, radicchio, and endive. I grew to love them. To those bored with the ordinary mediocre, I suggest they acquaint themselves with Harvey Osgood and sample a more exotic <laughs> diet. Soon you will learn to love him as I have, much as one learns to love I have admired Harvey and Helen's mantra about transparency and openness. In a openness. manly way. Only if they would be comfortable <laughs> with the brutally honest yeah. words I have written. I would never write or still. read such a thing to anyone else on an anniversary, much less title this Bitter Greens. However, I know they understand such words come from a place of deeply rooted love and understanding, but I preach to the choir. The close friends of Harvey and Helen gathered here all know what I speak of is true. Congratulations, Helen and Harvey, on your fourth anniversary. Know that you're an extraordinary example to all of us of what a couple joined together can be. You have shown us that an atheist and a Christian can love and lie peaceably together with mutual respect.
you guys. You made it happen. Now you know you guys made it happen, right? It don't mean shit without friends, right? That's right. And wow. By the way, Harvey, you know, I had a lot of tabs open this morning. I do a lot of research on my stories. I had Wild Man of Borneo up. And it was <laughs> no, seriously. And I was scanning through. It's a long, long thing. A lot of images, different pictures. You, you were remarkably, it was a remarkable resemblance to quite a few of those depictions of Wild Man of Borneo, which you demonstrated quite nicely over there. Thank you, Thank you bro.